I don't think there's anything more exciting than coming home with a batch of baby chicks. But if you get home and you suddenly realize that you don't have everything that you need, it can get stressful really quick. I'm not gonna let that happen to you. When I was a little girl, I wanted to save the world. When that didn't happen, I decided to create my own world where things changed for the better every single day. Welcome to Chickenlandia. Hey guys, welcome to Chickenlandia. I am a backyard chicken educator here in the Pacific Northwest, but you can call me the president of Chickenlandia. Today, I'm just gonna give you a list of all the things that you need when you bring home baby chicks so that we can make sure you're totally prepared. I also have another video about raising baby chicks the Chickenlandia way, where I go into more detail about what all these things are meant to do that I'm about to tell you about. And if you wanna check that out, I'm gonna leave that link in the description so that you can watch it. When I teach my chicken classes, one of the things that I tell my students to make it easier for them to remember what they need to have when they bring baby chicks home is to think like a mother hen. We know that if we go to the store and we get baby chicks, or we go to a local breeder, we get some baby chicks, bring them home, or maybe we're incubating and they've hatched, we know that we need to provide those babies with all the things that mama hen would provide. So let's start out Number one, with shelter. If a baby chick is being brooded by their mama, that mama will make sure that they have a safe place to be where they can be away from the elements and they can be warm enough and just be safe. So what we're gonna do is provide our baby chicks with what is called a brooder box or just a brooder where we can raise them until they're ready to go outside. There are a number of safe options. One of my favorites is a galvanized metal tub. You can buy it at the farm store. They are usually used for pigs or horses, but they're great to raise baby chicks in because they're a good size. You can usually keep them in it, depending on how many you have, until they're ready to go outside. And they're fairly easy to cover with like a hardwire mesh to make sure that they don't fly out of it. If you only have a few baby chicks and you're just bringing them home, sometimes a nice plastic tub is all you will need. They will likely grow out of it. So just keep that in mind. If you're gonna use a plastic tub, you will have to account for growth and have something ready for them to move into. Unless you have just like a few little bantams, then they could possibly stay in it, depending on their size, until they're ready to go outside. One of my favorite brooders to use is actually a guinea pig cage. And the reason I like it is because it's already a cage. You don't have to find a lid for it. And depending on how many you have and how big the cage is, they can just grow out in it and be ready to go outside. Baby chicks, if you see them with their mama hen, they will be pecking and scratching around, but they're always gonna run back to mama hen and get that warmth underneath her body because they really need that until they're about six to eight weeks old. Of course, we don't have feathers. Chicks are not gonna be brooding underneath us. <laughs> I mean, at least not underneath me. The most popular option is a heat lamp. Now, when you go to the farm store to purchase a heat lamp, you're gonna see that there is a white option and there's a red option. And I want you to go for the red option. The red lamp just casts a nice red glow throughout the brooder and they just seem to be more calm with it. For many years, I used a heat lamp. And then a couple of years ago, I purchased a radiant brooder. I can't tell you how much of a difference it made, not only in my peace of mind because it's way less of a fire hazard. What I love about the radiant brooders is that the baby chicks can get underneath it when they need to, just like they would a mother hen. And they just seem to thrive better with it. And of course, then there's the peace of mind that it is safer for them and safer for my family to not have that extra fire hazard present. Yes, it is a little bit more expensive. It's definitely a great investment if you can swing it. 
Some people will want to use a thermometer to make sure that the brooder is the right temperature. I think if you wanna do that for peace of mind, that's great. I actually don't use a thermometer and I never have. For me, I'd rather keep an eye on the behavior of the chicks to make sure that they are warm enough. If they are all huddled under the heat lamp and peeping really loud, that means they're probably too cold. If they're all lined up around the sides of the brooder trying to get away from the lamp, they're too hot. You really just want baby chicks to be, you know, chilling. <laughs> Some will be pecking and scratching around. Some will be asleep under the brooder or the heat lamp. And it's just a nice, not stressful, calm feeling when you're observing them. Of course, you need a feeder and a waterer. To put in your feeder, you are going to need food because baby chicks need lots of food. What you will want to get for baby chicks is chick starter and it's formulated for baby chicks nutritional needs you don't want to give them layer feed or grower just yet you want to start them out on chick starter that's going to have everything that they need in it to get a good start in life you'll notice that there are two kinds of chick starter there's medicated and there's non-medicated medicated chick starter contains a low dose of a medicine in it that is meant to treat an intestinal disease that baby chicks and chickens get called coccidiosis. I recommend that you do your own research. Of course, with anything, it is risk versus risk. I normally recommend for a small flock to get non-medicated feed. There's a few reasons that I suggest that that I'm not gonna get to, into in this video. It's best to just do your own research and then do what you feel comfortable with. With baby chicks, your number one focus, as far as health is concerned, is going to be their intestinal health. And a great way to do that is to offer them grit from the beginning. Basically what grit is, is it's like teeth for chickens. You're gonna sprinkle a little bit around the brooder and mix it in with their feed. They will eat it and it goes into their gizzard and that's where their food gets chewed up. It's basically like coarse sand and it's much smaller than layer grit, so make sure you get the right kind. So here's a funny thing that I want you to have on hand, marbles. <laughs> There's a danger for baby chicks when they first come home that they might actually get into the waterer and they can get chilled or they can drown. And you don't want either of those things happening. That would be a stressful situation. What you can do is you can put marbles in the waterer and that will create a situation where the chicks can still drink out of the water, but they can't immerse themselves in it. Until they get a little bit bigger, grow a little bit of feathers, I would leave the marbles just to keep them safe. And especially if they're bantams, then they have that much more of a danger of drowning or immersing themselves in the water. So keep that in mind. The other thing that I want you to put into their waterers is a vitamin, probiotic, and electrolyte powder that you can get at basically any farm store. You can get it, put it in their water, and that is going to be a way for you to get them started out with a little boost so that they can do well right from the get-go. Another thing that I might offer baby chicks in their water is apple cider vinegar. Now, apple cider vinegar has gotten kind of a bad rap lately. Uh, some folks are feeling like it's not really that good for chickens, but I'm actually gonna put a study in the description about how apple cider vinegar can actually be beneficial to your chickens. So you might wanna check that out, but as always, do your own research and decide what you feel comfortable with. So you've got your brooder. You've got your heat source. You've got your feeder and waterer and everything that needs to go in it. And you've got your grit. Now you need to think about what to use for bedding. When baby chicks first come home to Chickenlandia, what I like to use is actually paper towels. I use that because it is best for baby chicks to get really good traction on their little feet. You want them to develop correctly. You don't want to end up with any problems that they could have if they're on a surface that doesn't have good traction. And the other reason I like to use paper towels is you can sprinkle the feed on the paper towels along with a little bit of grit. And it's super easy for them to find it when they first come home and you really want baby chicks to have super easy access 
to feed and water when they come home so that they can eat and drink as soon as possible. After a few days, you can replace the paper towels with wood shavings. I will use pine or aspen shavings. I don't use cedar because there is some thought that it could possibly harm their respiratory system. So I don't use that just to be safe. You can also use pine pellet bedding. I really like the pellet bedding because it's way less dusty than shavings. So I discovered that a couple of years ago. That's what I use now. I've also heard really good things about hemp bedding. I've never tried it. If you have, let me know what your experience was like in the comments because I wanna know. There are a few things that I want you to have on hand in case of chick emergency. You already have the vitamins, probiotics, and electrolytes. Those always come in handy if you have a sick chick or an injured chick, and they're also great for adult chickens. Green tea bags are also another thing that's great to have on hand. A needleless syringe is good to have on hand, and even a blow dryer. And if you're wondering, why do I need these things, especially the blow dryer, click on this video right here. It's all about two common baby chick issues and what to do about them. And remember, it's always 100% friendly content in Chickenlandia. You're gonna love it, and your chickens are gonna thank you.